Congratulations! You just bought a Shapoko or an X-Carve or some other sort of hobby CNC. And you're probably asking, what do I need to go buy right now? Well, I'm Rob Rob, and I've got some good news and some bad news. The bad news is there's kind of an endless, never-ending list of stuff that you can go buy. This is a pretty intense hobby. The good news, you don't need to go buy it all right now. And in fact, you probably shouldn't. And you might already have some of the stuff sitting around. But there are definitely a few things you're going to want to go grab. So in this video, I'm going to focus on like day one. Like the things that you should go buy for your Shapoko or other hobby CNC. Day one, week one, for the brand new, you know, crafter, artist, novice woodworker getting into this hobby. First, safety. You probably put this machine together yourself and it's moving metal like thousands of times a minute. So uh, you're gonna wanna take some basic safety precautions. First, safety glasses. And not just for yourself. The machine is so awesome, you're probably gonna wanna show it off to your wife, your kids, your friends, your neighbors. So get a few pair, unless you're gonna be working by yourself. But you're probably gonna wanna show the machine off to somebody. So get them some too. Dust. Second thing you're going to want is some sort of respirator or breath protection. You know, these guys are probably overkill. They're good for finishing work, but, uh, you know, for general purpose cutting, I just like, like, a motocross style mask. You know, like... Hearing protection. I like these Bluetooth 3M ones because I can listen to music and podcast. They're about 50 bucks. Get more for friends and family. They'll appreciate it. Next, let's talk about your workspace and work holding. And by workspace, I'm talking about the actual physical area of the machine where you're gonna be doing all your cutting. The machine's gonna ship stock with an MDF waste board on the bottom. You don't wanna cut into that. You want some sort of spoil board on top of it to keep your machine pristine. Go get a sheet of three quarter inch MDF Cut slightly less than the size of your machine and then just put it down and screw it in in the four corners. You know, the idea is you want to cut into this sacrificial piece of MDF you just went out and bought at the store instead of the nice fancy pre-cut one that came with your machine. So you're going to want to keep that for the life of your machine. This thing you can wreck and then throw away. As far as holding work down to your spoil bowl to carve, that can be a whole separate video. There's dozens of ways to hold your work down to the work surface from like T-tracks, to threaded inserts, to, to vacuum tables, to just using like a nail gun with either pin nails or plastic brads. But for right now, the easiest and quickest and cheapest way that I found to, to hold work to the work surface securely, blue painter's tape and CA glue. CA glue is a nerdy woodworker's way of saying super glue. You can buy all this stuff at Home Depot, but the super glue is gonna be cheaper, you know, from an online retailer because you can get big bottles. Uh, it comes in different weights, from thin to medium to thick. I like medium for general purpose adhesion. For the blue tape, I literally just, I have good luck with the regular buy it in a six pack roll at a big box retailer blue painter's tape. Measurements. As soon as you get your machine set up and you sit down for the first time and carbide create or whatever CAD cam program you're using, you're going to find you need to input the measurements of your work piece that you're going to cut. So you're going to measure the X and the Y, the dimensions of the board, like the length and width with a tape measure or a ruler. But you're also going to need the thickness of the board, in which case uh, a cheap pair of calipers. You know, 20 bucks, uh, you can get like the Husky brand at, Am at Home Depot or whatever kind of cheapies on Amazon. You don't need to go spend $100 just yet. If you start fabricating real parts and need like super tight tolerances, obviously invest in more precise tools. But if you're just doing, you know, words on walls and general first day craft stuff, uh, $20 set of calipers is gonna be just fine. Collets. The machine ships with a quarter inch collet that holds quarter inch end mills. On Carbide 3D site, they sell a set of two with a quarter inch and an eighth inch, and that way you can use both quarter inch and eighth inch end mills. 
there are little adapters that you can buy to make a quarter inch hold an eighth inch bit but I personally wouldn't mess around with that um, you know if the bit slips it's gonna a ruin the thing you're cutting and it could also you know start a fire wreck your spoil board like it could go real bad real quick if the bit slips out of that thing so I would stick to high quality engineered collets um, for the Makita and the Carbide 3D, they sell those on Carbide 3D. If you've got a DeWalt router, just look up where to go. Uh, I think Eclair is the company that makes all the good ones. Um, but yeah, get a set of precision collets to hold whatever size cutter you're going to be using. As for the cutters themselves, again, this is something, you know, we could do videos every week about different types of cutters. Up cut, down cuts, compression, like, there's a ton of variation. Keep it simple. Stanley. I recommend for a beginner to keep it simple. The machine's gonna come with a quarter inch upcut bit. Maybe get an eighth inch version of the exact same bit. Or you can get, you know, for the smaller ones, you can get an inexpensive 10 pack online. Um, and that might be good because you'll probably break a couple and it's no big deal. I would just get quarter inch, eight inch, straight cut. The thing that you wanna avoid is don't rush out and buy a whole bunch of stuff. First of all, you're probably gonna buy a bunch of crap you don't need. Second of all, there's no point in having it if you don't know why you need it or how to use it. So I would learn like a bit at a time and take it as you go. Like to start out, let's cut some basic shapes and pocket some holes and you know, you can use a basic up cut. Um, you know, once you get into like, oh hey, why is, you know, these are curly and I wanna do a better finish or I wanna use like some masking stuff, then you'll see the need like, oh, that's why we have a down bit. Or you wanna start cutting acrylics instead of wood. like. You'll figure out as you go why you need the different bits and then go get them then. But if you just rush out right now and try to buy everything you need, you're never going to learn how to use any of it and you're probably going to throw a lot of it away. Dust collection. Dust collection is super important at home shop. With a good dust shoe and a good dust separator, you know, most of it's going to stay contained and not annoy your family or be bad for your health. You might want to go back in time a couple of weeks and order your dust collector then so that it's waiting on you when you get the machine because they're they're pretty critical. I'm actually surprised they don't come with one, but you know, some people might have them in enclosures or whatever and they don't need them. You want a dust collector and you want to get it up and going as soon as possible. And by the way, if you get a piece of MDF to use as a spoil board and get a surfacing bit, I know you want to make it flat, do not surface MDF without dust collection or an enclosure. I did, and not only was it a mess to clean up, I actually broke my air conditioner because my heating intake is on the wall back there and the dust clogged the filters so bad, the whole system iced over and it was, it was an embarrassing service call. Do not surface MDF without a dust shoe. And don't cut MDF without wearing a respirator. And, but you want a dust shoe and you're gonna need a dust shoe and this is an anti-static hose a dust separator going into a shop vac my shop vac so yeah in addition to you know safety work holding measurements dust collection cutting it's a lot of stuff but there's just a couple final things that I would encourage you to consider on day one First, run out to like your Starbucks or Dunkin' Donuts or Big B's or whatever. Get a $5 gift card and tip your UPS driver a cup of coffee. Because if you ordered a Shapoko 3 XXL, they hate you now. The second thing that I'd recommend to all kind of new CNCers is a notebook of some sort or a journal. Um, I like this kind of hardcover unlined one because I can also do kind of crude sketches in it. Um, I find it's handy not just for design, but really, once you start cutting tool paths and um, experimenting with things, you're gonna want some notes. Like when I was making a sign and I wanted to carve around a letter um, and I wanted to get the offsets just right, you know, I'd run three different pieces of G code, you know, maybe one with a 0.2 offset, one with 0.3, one with a quarter. And just to like have like a notebook to kind of keep track of where these things go, um, you know. Feeds and Speeds is another 
thing that can get real confusing real quick. Um, and the ones that come with carbide software are super, super conservative right now. So as you push those and play with stuff, you're gonna wanna keep track of what works and what doesn't. Like what's looking smooth, what's breaking bits, um, you know. So if like, yeah, if I'm trying to, you know, the other day when I did my flattening walnut for the Dungeon Master screen, you know, I have an A and a B. And like, you know, I kept track of like, you know, how many passes at what cut depth. So I would highly recommend um, a shop notebook. Again, there's a lot of stuff that we covered really quickly and we're just scratching the surface. There is an infinite amount of stuff that we can explore in this hobby. But again, the point of this video was kind of day one, what you need to like safely show off this machine to your friends and family and to start to learn what its capabilities are. Um, as you figure that out, you know, you're gonna wanna get more stuff. Thanks a lot. If you like this and wanna see more content like this, please like and subscribe and hit the bell and all that other stuff. One of my New Year's resolutions for 2020 is to make more of these videos for the beginning hobby cnc -er and uh, novice woodworker. I'm having a blast on this journey and want you to come along with me. Cool. Let's make some stuff and be nice to each other on the internet.